There is nothing to the spiritual heritage of India by Yuji Krishnamurti. Hello everyone, this is PP Flower. Check out my books on Amazon.com in the Kindle store. I have released a trilogy called All Kal Nun and I have also released a standalone novel called Yama Echo Maya. And they both had risen on the charts of the bestseller on Amazon. Yay! Okay. Now for um, today's podcast topic, it's my trip to India, actually, because, um, and that's why I have been like MIA or missing in action from my channel because I was um, on tour in India. Now, I want to quote something uh, that Yuji had said before I begin. It, he had said, the heritage of India is change and you don't want to change. So that's what Yuji Krishnamurti had said. Now, Someone had said to you, G. Krishnamurti, or he was asking a question or something during a discussion. And he had said that lucky or unlucky, our tradition tells us that life is transient, that all is in flux. And Yuji replied to him by cutting him off in the middle. He said that that is the tradition of India. I'm talking about change, not the tradition you talk about, which is no change. Your whole life is a denial of the reality of change. And what Yuji Krishnamurti said was that nothing is in anyone's hands. That's what he was trying to imply, you know, lucky or unlucky. It is simply a change. He did not hold India in high regard either uh, because of its traditions or culture or whatever that Indians are so proud of, actually. <laughs> not that any other country was better, according to Yuji Krishnamurti. I mean, he had said that human nature remains the same, no matter where you go. And uh, I have mentioned this before, that you know, when my husband had visited Yuji in 2006, um, he stared at him for a while, and then all of a sudden, he just started saying, there is no hope for India. And he indicated that if anyone gets a chance, should leave India. And my husband was there actually because there was some visa processing that was initiated for him or people had approached him. And he was confused because he really loved his parents. Like he was, he grew up thinking that he would be the one to take care of them. Although he has an elder brother also. And he never wanted to leave India. I mean, it was just out of the question. But then when he went into the IT industry, of course, it was a trend back then. And and so he was also approached for U.S. visa. And so he was very confused at the time. And that's why he was standing there. And all of a sudden, Yuji said that. And so, of course, my husband, who was contemplating at the time if he should go or not or get his visa processed for U.S., he decided to get it done. He decided to get the visa processing done, and that was 16 years ago. And this uh, brings me to today's topic, which is my trip to India, because I also left India never knowing that or never wanting to leave India. But things happened and I left. And once I left, I was very sure that I did not want to go back. But that realization did not come to me because I left India and came to US. No, it was only after I had lived in US and then when I went back to India to visit my parents, that's when I realized that I did not want to come back and settle down in India. And I think what happens is that when you are living somewhere, it's home, right? And there's no place better than home for anyone. For anyone, except for people who don't have a home, I mean, they are elevated and they are at a different level. We can't even think like them. And I think I had mentioned in one of my podcasts about homeless people, they have very different priorities. The ones that we think is our priority is actually their priority. We are just pretending that we, you know, family comes first and, but no, that priority is actually of a homeless person because they don't even have the basics covered. So anyway, back here, Back to my topic, <laughs> when I went back to India, I the first time after I had lived in US for a few years, and actually at that time, things were beginning to improve. It was like in early 2000. But even then, all I saw was, you know, that how dirty everything was. And everything was super dirty, I mean, according to me, but everyone was very comfortable. 
they were very comfortable with everything around them. Nobody even noticed. And then I realized, heck, I didn't notice it when I was living there. I never noticed how dirty everything was. It was never an issue. It was never even a question. It didn't bother me back then. But then when I knew something else, it started bothering me. And the funny thing is that, you know, you always keep your house clean, right? Even in India, I've seen that people keep their home clean or they think it is clean. They throw everything outside. They are not bothered with how the outside of their house looks like. That's not their problem. Even the big, you know, this time around also, and I've noticed it even before, every time I have gone to India, that all these establishments, all these big companies that have gone there, I mean the entertainment one, I'm not talking about the corporate sector, wherever people have, especially like, I think it's called White Fields in Bangalore, where all these IT companies are there. And that area is very different. It's very concrete, though. It's not like the other Bangalore, the other side of the Bangalore, which is very green. And there is also, you know, unhygienic ways of life, but it's very green. But White Fields is very concrete and it's clean or cleaner. And I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about, you know, all these establishments like the entertainment one. I, I saw all these pubs, all these malls and everything there. Everything is there. Okay. You want to go and have a good time. You have a place there and the food is delicious, but my God, have you seen how it's made? How unhygienic, even how it's presented to you, except for a few five-star hotels that are chain hotels from outside, they follow a certain protocol, but otherwise everything is handled by hand, bare hands. In one of these places, I'm not going to mention a name to get in trouble, but we went there and it um, looked really nice. Everything was very clean. Of course, on the inside, outside was still the same. This woman, he, she brought our food and her finger was like dug inside the food <laughs> and she just kept it there. And, and I, I didn't even know what to do. I didn't even know if I should be eating that food. And obviously I fell super sick. I got food poisoning by the end of my trip. And my daughter has uh, some viral infection in her throat. I mean, that's just the way it is. But all I did in uh, India this time was um, I went on a local trip to Goa with my friends, which was really nice only because of the company, uh, not because of the location or because, you know, because of the where we stayed or where we went. No, all of that, um, according to me, was very dirty and not not what I have seen. I have seen so much better. I just don't understand how I was walking on that beach in Goa. It was so dirty. There were like, there were stuff everywhere. I mean, I don't know how they dispose of the trash. I also took a trip, a road trip in Karnataka and we went a little bit inside the Kerala border as well. Uh, we went to Mysore, Coorg, Kasargor, Hornadu, Chikmangalur, Kuke, Subramanya, Dharmastala, and of course, Bangalore. And my husband wanted this to do this with me. He wanted me to take a road trip with him. And so I did. And the road trip was a pain in the ass. I mean, literally because uh, of the road, there were <laughs> so many potholes. The road were poorly maintained. The construction work had started in some places, but it was just abandoned. I don't know why, maybe because of the rain, because it was constantly raining. And we were just, I could never just sit there and enjoy the scenery. The scenery was beautiful on the outside, but I could just never enjoy it because the roads were so bad and we just kept bumping, you know, I was just jumping in my seat and I felt like throwing up all the time. That had never happened to me, the motion sickness thing. And it, it happened there. And now I dread a car ride. Even uh, a local cab ride I was dreading there because every time I would sit inside a car, I just felt the motion sickness. And it only started after that road trip. Of course, places were nice, but only when you got there, like we stayed in Coorg in a resort, when you got to the resort, it was nice. But how you get there, I mean, the accessibility is, is still a problem. And nobody is, you know, addressing it. Nobody is fixing it. 
I don't know who's going to fix it. Maybe no one, I because it doesn't seem to be a problem for the locals. They just think that that is how it is. Nobody says anything. Uh, and I remember like years ago, there used to be an ad a advertisement for this um, tire, you know, for your cars, you know, for your vehicles. And uh, their punchline was, it's made for the Indian roads because there are so many potholes. <laughs> so... I don't know. They are like designing things around it and not fixing the road itself. No, I I just, you won't believe that I started crying during that road trip. I was so disgusted with everything because everything was dirty. Everything was dirty. And I, I couldn't even go to the bathroom this one full day because everywhere we went, it was just not up to my standards and uh, I just wouldn't go there and I just started crying and my husband was like I'm sorry I didn't realize that you would break down like this <laughs> he immediately um, changed a little bit we stayed in a five-star hotel for two days until I recovered and <laughs> then we started again but of course by the end I got sick anyway I had really really high fever and I had food poisoning. It was all a waste of time anyway, by the end. But, you know, even, and back, uh, I want to mention one more thing. Back when we came to Bangalore, my husband wanted to take me to this place called Vidyarthi Bhavan. It's a place where they serve only a few things that they have on the menu. And they've been there since 1943, I think. And um, it's a really old restaurant. And there is like a huge line out there and you have to reserve or get your name uh, entered. And they do it this old fashioned way. There is no computer there. There is some guy sitting there with, the, um, you know, a paper diary or something, <laughs> calendar sort of. And he puts your name there and gives you a time, like come at 10, come at 11 or come at nine, whatever. And, you know, that's how you would know how, what the wait time was. And I was standing there, even though my husband had, you know, called ahead of time and booked it for us. We had to wait for 10 minutes, I think. Others, they got timing for like two hours from when we were there. So that's how huge the line was. My thing was the outside of the restaurant was really dirty. Okay, the accessibility was very poor. The waiting area was, had no seating or nothing. It was just this small, tiny hall, even though so many people were there. Um, nobody cared. The restaurant people don't care. They don't care about anything, not even hygiene. I don't even know why that restaurant is so famous because the food was really nasty. The dosa had so much grease in it and it looked burnt to me and it was very very crispy i had heard that it's crispy on the outside and chewy on the inside but i'm sorry that's not how it was and the guy who was serving didn't even wash it wash his hands or was wearing any kind of um, gloves or anything even the food was bad i mean if the food was good it would have been fine, but it would have gotten like so many strikes if that restaurant was here in the US. But it was not good. I would not recommend that place to anyone. No one should ever go there because I felt sick after eating there. Nobody was cleaning anything. I mean, there was a cleaning guy who was coming and picking up the dirty dishes. But my God, you, you have to see. I mean, you can't even, I, I didn't even put my hand on the table because that's how dirty it was. The whole restaurant was dirty. Everything was dirty. I, I would not recommend you to go there ever. And I don't know if it's the new management or that's just how it has been or that's how the people there like it. Maybe everybody likes it that way. And it's just my personal problem because I realized even with every other thing that I was noticing, you know, with my Goa road trip or, or this road trip or just generally, you know, commuting there. Yeah, I have to mention this also. Uber. Uber is a big problem there. Earlier, Uber was good like five, six years ago, whenever they introduced it, it was good. It was great. But now what happened was that all these local cabs and, you know, auto drivers and all those people, they um, started going out of business. So they joined Uber. Okay. And now the culture has been brought in there. So what happens is you book a Uber, that guy will message you, where do you want to go? And if he doesn't like your destination, he's going to say no. 
he'll say, I don't want to go. And I took a screenshot because I got this text message from this guy um, saying, Kaha jana hai? which means, where do you want to go? And I said, you know, whatever place I was going. And he's like, Nahi jana, meaning I don't want to go. I'm like, what? It's not about you going. It's about me going and you taking me there because you're working for a company. That's what you do. And that's why Uber does not reveal the destination. You just pick up a ride. Uh, and these guys, they will ask you, they will message you, they will pick your thing, they will pick your ride, okay, they will take it, okay, I'm going to um, take you wherever you want to go. And then they will text you and asking you where your destination is. And if they don't like it, or if they don't want to go there, or if it's not profitable for them, they will say no to you. And they will cancel it at their end. I just don't understand. And that's only because all these guys who were out of business, who were actually monopolizing industry from before with their autos and cab and shitty service, have come in Uber, have taken a job at an Uber. So the culture is the same now? You're facing the same thing? I don't know. It was just so bad. So where I was going before I said this Uber thing is that all of this is not a problem for the Indians there. They're very fine. They are, they are okay with all this. They are like, oh my God. And there's also this another service called uh, Swiggy, Zomato. You know, it's kind of like DoorDash that they have in US. And these things, what, what are they that you order your food? Somebody will come and deliver it to you. So all these people are enjoying all these services. You know, they are, they're like, oh, we just sit at home and then order food. But the food, how is it being made? Nobody knows. Nobody sees. And, and ew, I, 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 I did not want to eat from outside, but I was forced to eat outside the most during this trip because I went to a local trip to Goa with my friends for five, four days. And I went to a road trip to Karnataka for five days. So I basically, out of the month that I stayed there, um, 10 or 15 days, I had to eat outside. And that's why I fell sick this time. I had never fallen sick because I used to stay in and I was very calculated what I wanted to eat and I did not fall sick ever. But this time I fell sick. And so what I was saying is that all of this was my problem. This was all my problem, whatever I had during this trip to India. None of this was a problem for anyone else that's living there. They are enjoying life to the fullest. They don't care if the roads are bad. They just care that, oh, there's a pub out there where I can go and have a good time. There's this bar. And my God, you have to go and see and check out these places on the inside. They are like brilliant. Brilliant. There's luxury there. But as soon as you step outside, you see the poverty. There is no line drawn there. And that's what I felt. That's what I felt the problem was that in India... Um, the transition is not good, you know, you know, transition from rich to poor. Um, it's not good. It's, it's, it's not uh, evident that well. And that's what I think the problem is. And that, and that problem I also noticed with um, landscaping, which is unnaturally done here in US. In India, naturally, everything is like um, invading <laughs> anything that you make unless you have regular maintenance there and so during my road trip to Karnataka I was like horrified to see homes that were invaded by all this creepers and climbers and and it was not in a good way it, it there was algae everywhere <laughs> and I don't know how people were walking there I don't know I was <sighs> I don't know, my mother got hurt so many times. She was also with me during this road trip. She fell down and got hurt. But what I'm trying to say is that this creeping up of the nature inside, that that transition was not good or was not there. Good or bad is my opinion, but it wasn't there. In US, it's there. You have artificial landscaping, you know, trans transitioning everything properly. But there, the transition is not there. They, nobody works on the transition except for a few places, few things. You would see that that transition is there. But otherwise, I don't know. There was no uh, pedestrian sidewalk 
to the um, actual roadway transition? No. Or to the actual homes or the shops on the side of the road? <laughs> There's no transition. Everything is just flowing and blending in. And you, I don't know. There are cars parked. There's animals walking everywhere. And, that, and, and nobody has a problem with that. All of this was my problem. It's my personal problem. And so that's what I realized. And I was like, I'm going to make this podcast and I'm going to say that, that it is my problem. It is nobody else's problem. India is great. I'm the one who has the problem and I need to fix it. Or if I can't fix it, I better not go there. Well, thank you for listening. <laughs> Enjoy India if you are from India. I am going to stay here for a while until I recover because I'm truly broken this time. So I'm going to work on myself. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.